Sure, I, I don't think any like I played Warcraft. I don't I don't want to see some dudes chopping wood. <laughs> like get me some more gold. <laughs> so I, you know, there's certain things I don't want to see in a Warcraft movie that are the mechanics of the game. But uh, I honestly, this second trailer won me over. Like the first trailer, I was like, ah, you know, I I, was, I guess it was getting used to the way they had made the orcs look, but they look great. I mean, I think this this trailer actually shows you more of the story, which is what I wanted to see. Like, I get it. They're they're, you know, humans and orcs and they're going to fight. But this was kind of cool. Just seeing just a little bit more of how they're going to start it all up. And uh, I, for some reason, the way they put this trailer together, to, you know, made me say, wow, I actually want to see this Warcraft film as opposed to like, uh, it's a combination. It is a combination of Lord of the Rings and. Um, you know, every other fantasy game that's ever been turned into a movie or I mean, because that's what the mythology is. So it's sort of like it does look like, you know, everything else. But at the same time, it, it, you know, I think they did a lot of extra things, at least for myself. I like the armor. I like some of the little flourishes that are in there right now. So, yeah, for me, I, I was actually now I'm interested in seeing. The, uh, I've, I have I love the story of the Magnificent Seven that follows the Seven Samurai, which is, it's been remade so many times. Battle Beyond the Stars, another like Magnificent Seven. I'm sure we'll get a Star Wars version of the Magnificent Seven. I love the story. I love like going to get the, the you know, the outlaws teaming up and then saving or getting the solution at the end. So, so yeah, I think all this this mixture of actors looks really promising to me. I can't wait to see a trailer for it. So yeah, I buy it. Yeah, um, definitely. It's got a it's got a cool action flavor, yeah, and all the characters I mean, yeah. look different. Like Dinoff and uh, Vincent uh, D'Onofrio is like you know he looks like some you know bad like woodsman. I'm, yeah. Why'd you take me out of my cabin? You know, <laughs> he looks it, like he belongs in Warcraft. Yeah, I'm I'm very happy he's coming back. I think it was important to get the entire original team that made that mega hit back to make the second one because it's a magical team and hopefully they can recreate that. So yeah, obviously Deadpool will be back and it'll be rated R. We got the entire team back. I buy everything he's saying. It's like, I think, uh, you know, before Deadpool, you would never have thought of having any of these team movies be P, you know, obviously PG 13, but never R. But now I think he's right. They've set a precedent. Deadpool is going to be part of X force as will cable. I think you go from an R and an R to, a PG-13 where they could do a G-rated X-Force as a musical. You know what I mean? It's, it has to be R. It kind of just it's like you've already set a precedent. Let these guys rock this quadrant of these with these characters and what all of us fans really liked from the film, which is basically a no-holds-barred action film with superheroes swearing, violence, craziness, fun. I mean, that's, that's kind of what Deadpool is, and that's what I want to see Deadpool 2, and that's what I want to see in X-Force. I don't want to see them you know, like crimp back so they can like, have a family go on the weekend. It's not a family film. It's a, it's basically for young adults and older adults. That's what I, how I feel. Well, what's interesting is like to make an R, all you have to do is drop two f bombs, which I think you know that's stupid. You have one f bomb, it's PG thirteen. Right. You have two, it's R. So the the rating system's already flawed and dumb. It needs to get worked on and it's fixed. F up. Just it's f <laughs> up. Um, but aside from that, it, it could be a challenge for them to have you know Deadpool come up with different like PG-13 rips on people. You swabbly Windheimer. You'd be like, what's that? <laughs> well, I couldn't say what I really wanted to say. So, you know, I don't know if they want to take that Pepsi challenge or not. I think just make it R. Man, I totally buy this image. I even though we're not right. we're not even a buy and sell. Oh. But you know what? Uh, I think uh, I, I like the image. It reminds me of this movie called The Wolverine, uh, where he fought this uh, kind of green kind of like person in a cosplay outfit named Viper. Remember that? Uh, not the Wolverine that we all know. It's yeah. Hugh Jackman in the yeah. Claws. Yeah. Oh, that movie. Yeah, it was just called The Wolverine. And he fought a dude, a green person. Yeah, green lady at the end. It's yeah. It was The Wolverine, right? the second one. Right. Yeah, so that, it looks a lot like that outfit, but a better version of it. Um, you know, it's going to be hard for me to even want to see this film, so I'm not the right demographic to even talk about outfits for Power Rangers, but... If you know, I, I'd be more interested in the fans and what they have to say. Any of any of you who've watched Power Rangers in the past and you're Power Rangers fans, does this fit into even a new Power Rangers look? Is this something that excites you? Like, oh my god, this looks amazing, or is it like some like it doesn't have the spandex? You know, I don't really, I don't get Power Rangers at all. So for me, it's like she looks cool. She's got like some weird little nobulins on her face and. He's all green. Snap the Oracle. Buy or sell Civil War, <laughs> making two hundred million at the box office. Oh, 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 oh. oh yes. Um, you know what? I was saying this a couple days ago. It's going to make way over two hundred million dollars. Way over. Yeah. It's 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 an incredible film. It's going to the buzz once people see this film. Like we've been buzzing about it. 
Well, some yeah. of us have. Oh, right. I mean, sorry, Ellis hasn't <laughs> yeah. seen it yet. <laughs> some but of us have. We we've seen it, yeah. and we could we can't stop talking about it behind Ellis's back because we're keeping the spoilers away. We don't want to ruin it for you. He sees it tomorrow. You're seeing it tomorrow. There yeah, you go. Yeah, I was going to so, make the announcement. Oh, you oh, cannot kidding. stop ruining this show. <laughs> I know, I apologize. You just cannot kidding. stop wait, being the wait, monkey wait, in my wrench. Wait, we're going to drop Ruti We haven't said that yet. So yeah. you know what? It's gonna. I think it's going to make way over $200 million. I mean, $200 million is just like, it's, a, it's. oh, it only made $200 million is what I'm saying. Like, I wouldn't be surprised for you to hear it's made $230 million. More than Star Wars. Yeah. Wow. It's because basically the buzz on this film is is over the chart. It's out of. It's off the planet. It's insane. So, and it, when people see it. The immediately what they're going to say to every single person they know is you've got to see this movie. So that's all that's going to happen is on Thursday and Friday is that's all people are going to hear. So they're going to they're going to run to the theaters on Saturday and even Sunday is going to be insane. So, I mean, that's my that's what I feel. I feel like that's what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, 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 um, I, I got just from that poster alone. I wish we had got that on tape. Um, <laughs> but the, that was laugh out loud. Yeah, that was, that was laugh out loud. Yeah. So yeah. Was just a red background at. with Steve Crow. Like, yeah. Schmoes, Schmoes, yeah. Schmoes. I don't know that name back a little bit, Schmoes. Come on. Tits. I don't know that you need to. <laughs> but I don't know if you need to yeah. say, oh, you haven't seen the movie. I don't let you know. It's, a, it's an actual movie that happens. These guys with cameras had, and they, these no, guys no, haven't no. had their coffee wow. yet. Okay. So, so silly. To, I guess, Ashley, what's our next? <laughs> no, oh, well, you don't want to talk about Shannon Elizabeth? Not really anymore. No. <laughs> what? I mean, since we were going animated, you could you could pick a lot of like animals like Bambi, uh, Dumbo, Blue from the original animated Jungle yeah. Book. Um Live action animals, I can't. Uh, it's hard to think. I mean, because I saw Garfield; that was garbage. <laughs> so, like you know, there's yeah. a lot of lot of a lot of ones that they tried. Yeah, I mean, oh, Paddington. Live action. You like Paddington? Paddington. Paddington yeah. Thank yeah. you. I I'll, loved Paddington. I'll yeah. steal. You know, it's fun. I'm glad you made those voices because honestly, when when we read comments that that say that, that's how we hear. People, yeah. they, you, know, you guys can pay it off. You sound like you sound so dumb that you have to make voices. You can't read it like a regular person. The, your your question though, it's, I'm glad you brought it up. There is zero agenda. I, like Christian said, I was so incredibly excited to see this film, and so disappointed by the outcome that it actually took me almost a full week to recover <laughs> from my disappointment. Like I mean, we did a review the like literally an hour after, and my numbers kept dropping every every day. The next day, it dropped a full point, and then the next week I was down another point it was just because I saw it again and I was like it didn't work out for me the story didn't work uh, the characters didn't work I felt there was like a oh, to me almost a betrayal of the characters in a certain sense as to at least what I expected or what was my opinion of these characters so I mean every everybody has their own opinion I mean all the people who love Batman v Superman is like, I give it a 10 out of 10 it's a masterpiece just because I didn't doesn't mean I'm wrong and I'm not saying you're wrong it's our opinion but there was no agenda at all. I wanted to love that movie. I wanted to, I wanted that movie to be the number one film of all superheroes for me, and it didn't. It didn't happen. So you know, the great thing about it is, hey, people learn from their mistakes. Recently, we heard there was like a four-hour cut of Batman v Superman. That alone should tell you why at least some people didn't like it, or say it didn't make sense, or felt that it was like, oh, these storyline segments just drop off or don't have any. There's no reason that people want to do this. There's no, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Is like they had four hours and they had to cut out an hour and a half of story. I mean, that's that'll tell you something. You know, I don't think anybody went in to see Batman v Superman with a hate on. And I think DC has a, like 10 more movies to make it up for us. I think Suicide Squad, I'm looking forward to that. There's nothing, there's, I mean, I wish I was on somebody's payroll. That would be awesome. Mr. John Schnepp, where right. can people find you when you're not napping? Oh, when I'm not asleep and uh, late for work, you guys can find me uh, on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp. Uh, check out my Kickstarter, it's the last two days. Rally, help me make this film. Uh, Sweaties Unite, Rise of Uber Nerd. You could still donate. Let's see if we make this film or not. You know what is going to happen, though? This Friday, I'm going to attack uh, Woodstock, Chimpstock, whatever his name is. I'll just let, let's just uh, sit on Chimpstock for right now. It's going to be a battle. Let's see if his luck wins out this time. That used to be my to my title, Dream Crusher, yes. but since then, <laughs> I've just become beloved by everyone with all my opinions on Batman v Superman. What's up, everybody? I love you. Schnepp, do you come from France? Are you excited about the Coneheads? Are you excited about Doctor Strange? Give us your take. I am over the moon with this uh, with this trailer. Oh, I loved yeah. it. I absolutely love this trailer. Um, I'm in the exact opposite camp of Dennis. I thought Tilda Swinton looked fantastic as the Ancient One. I'm glad they gave her that kind of bald head, kind of... Um, 
uh, like kung fu type of you know that the, it felt like they were adding a little bit of uh, some of the Matrix and some of the old kung fu uh, film, uh, like that TV series with David Carradine. It had that kind of flavor to it, where she's kind of the she really is like the master, and that's what was so great when she like literally punches him into the astral plane. That was pretty sweet. And, uh, yeah. and then we kind of go on this little quick uh, quick trip, really fast through some of these uh, different kind of uh, visuals. Then he comes back and he's like, teach me. I just, I really liked, also, I mean, if you haven't read the comics, they're basically kind of giving you a flashback, flash forward origin of, you know, why he's searching for this ancient one is to fix his hands so they could become the one of the greatest surgeons again. He is a very selfish person in the beginning of the film, but I don't know how they're going to actually, if what we're seeing, like how they cross cut it, I think that's kind of how they will do it. They're like, they're not going to spend a lot of time on the previous version of his life, like him being a selfish surgeon. We'll see that. I, my guess is in flashbacks as he's searching and, you know, you see him sort of going back to his past and then it'll flash to, you know, flash forward back and forth. But anyway, I thought the the trailer was great. It gave you little hints and, and you saw all the main characters, Chuatel AG4, Benedict Cumberbatch, um, Tilda Swinton, and of course, Mads Mikkelsen, and even uh, what's Amy, 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 Amy Rachel, Rachel McAdams. Adams. Well, it was actually officially clarified that he is directing it. Um, Hollywood Reporter and a lot of other uh, news sites verified it with Warner Brothers. He's writing it, he's directing it, and he's acting as Bruce Wayne and Batman. And I love it. I, I think the takeaway from my, myself and a lot of other people who, who either liked it or didn't like the Batman v Superman film was that Ben Affleck was a great choice to play Bruce Wayne and Batman. I think that the visual interpretation of Batman in this new, um, you know, DC universe, I loved it. I love that kind of that this version of Batman. So I'm really happy to see that it's going to continue on. I trust Ben Affleck as a writer. I trust him as a director, and I trust him now as playing Bruce Wayne and Batman, having seen him do it. So I'm really excited about this. I hope it's October 2018 because that would just be a perfect Halloween to see the Batman in theaters. So yeah, I I'm really excited that they finally announced it. They just haven't announced the date yet, but I'm glad that he's a part of it. And I'm glad he's doing the film. You know, I got to add, it's like it's really fun because we all we've talked about this. Ben Affleck is a gigantic Batman fan. He had actually built a Batcave in one of his former houses. Like like this guy like is a real Batman fan. So to have him writing it is incredible because he's already an Oscar winning writer. To have him like the kinds of things that he's going to be able to pull out, like I can imagine he'll do an entire like five or ten minute opening sequence, maybe with a whole other villain before we even get to the main story. Like I don't know what he's going to do, but I'm, it's really it's like the Russos doing Captain America, where you have someone who's a fan of the character actually and who understands the character actually writing it and crazy enough directing it and being Batman. That's freaky and awesome at the same time. Uh, if it was Batwoman and she was like, I got a bat cave, I'd be like, where, oh, well, that where is it? Different. Yeah, let's That's check it out. Okay. <laughs> well, if it's a Batwoman, yeah. I am running for the hills the other on, direction. Man. Little gothy, little awesome right there. Yeah, no thanks, I get my fill. Spider-Man was so fantastic and spectacular in Captain uh, America Civil War. There. Whoa, uh, web of what? Um, <laughs> You know what? I, I, they could have a corny title like Spider-Man Homecoming. I'm still excited about the movie. I'm not a big fan of the of the title. You know what? Vulture, what, maybe he could be in high school and it's his teacher. He's like, I'm creating weird vulture wings. Probably not as corny as that. So <laughs> let's just know that it's not going to be that. Are you auditioning to play the vulture right <laughs> now? Hey, hello there, You're Peter Parker. Help me put these wings on. That's how the vulture sounds in my mind. Hello. Um, if you read the character description <laughs> for the vulture, he's not too far off from something a schnep could play. I mean, look, he's this brilliant scientist. He got screwed over. I, I, think, I think the money guy screwed him over, but he had built this flight harness and the flight harness not only enabled him to be able to fly all around this was created in like the early 60s by yep. stan lee by the way they, it also gave him superhuman strength so totally mirrors my life story i did yeah. build a flight harness and, totally and does the vulture over. hang out the old folks home and that's where <laughs> Schnepp is going to be hanging yeah, out we'll be well. hanging out the old folks home in about two or three years geriatrics me and we'll be playing yahtzee ashley will come and visit me she said she yeah, promised I'll read you she'd come story. visit me anyway homecoming <laughs> i'm not sold on the title but i love that they are doing this Spider-Man movie with the new, brand new Spider-Man that's introduced in Civil War. When you guys see it, you will love this new Spider-Man. And any any worries that you have about Homecoming or whatever the title's called, will be, yeah, it'll be washed away. <laughs> it's like Batman. If the new Batman's called Batman of Special Thanksgiving. You'd be like, what the hell? 
what is that? You know, you still go weird. watch it, you'd but you'd be like, it. what the hell's that What's title? What's with the title? I'm sure they're tying this title in in multiple ways, not just that he's back at Marvel, but maybe it does have like, you know, you know, it's, he's got to ask a girl out for a date to the dance or there's say this could be a whole bunch of different things that are are worked into that title. Well, that's yeah. why the embargo is lifted. So if you want to check out all the people like me and Dennis who saw the film in our opinions, but non spoiler related, you could see it at two o'clock. Yeah. I think Ellis, are you going to watch it? Our, our non spoiler. Uh, and now it's time for buy or sell, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Go check that out on Collider's channel. It'll be up later today. But. I buy it. I absolutely love it. It's such a weird a melding of both of them. You're right. Men in Black 3 sucked. It arrived dead on arrival. They should have called it M-I-B-D-O-A is what it should have been <laughs> subtitled. What a horrible film. Oh, I hate but, that movie yeah, so much. I didn't even see the end. I walked out. It oh, it gets walk worse. It yeah. gets worse. Walk away film. Um, so, yeah, and, and 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street, fantastic. Now we're at 23 Jump Street MIB. So just to flip it around and call it MIB 23, it I love it. I love it's it's it is kind of like you're right. They're not straight up saying it's a sequel, Jump Street and Men in Black, but I like that they're just saying, look, it's the combination of both these worlds. And you're gonna kind of guess that Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill are both asked to be men in black, and there's gonna be a brand new person who's training them. And that's kind of it's you're right, it's gonna have that naked gun flavor. I hope it's got all of those elements to it. I loved I, both of those Jump Street movies are incredibly fun and really funny. So to see that merged with a dead uh, you franchise. Know, franchise, it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, they're pumping that back to life, you know, with some much needed comedy. So MIB twenty three, just the title alone makes me love it. Impossible <laughs> that it'll be the worst movie of whatever year it comes out. It's, it's impossible. It's impossible. Is there I'm calling it right Norm now? Of the North no, movie there's just no up? way that it could be the worst. <laughs> There's always something worse. Jeanette Byersall, Tessa Thompson joining Thor Ragnarok. Chris Hemsworth. Chris Thor. Hemsworth's Thor, <laughs> Thor character. Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth's worth to me <laughs> is in gold bullions, <laughs> soup style. Um, Tessa Thompson, I totally buy her as an actress. She's great. She's one of the reasons I liked Creed because it's like I actually believed her and Adonis's uh, budding love, and it was really fun to see their interaction in the film. And uh, she's an up-and-coming great actress, so why not be in a superhero film? Her agents are smart. They're like, get in one of these things, and they she, they got her in something that I think has a lot of promise. Thor and Hulk doing the Bing Crosby, uh, you know, Bob Hope, you know, singing out, you know. I think they're going to be singing on some weird alien camel, and she might be <laughs> on a third one, like a weird turtle creature, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it sounds great. Uh, you know, Jarella. Actually, thank you guys. Yesterday, I asked on Heroes, like, or it was actually on Movie Talk. I was like, "What was the Hulk's girlfriend's name from the '80s?" And a lot of you uh, responded and told because I couldn't remember. Jarella was her name, and I think she's playing Jarella. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm saying she's not going to be Chris oh, okay. Hemsworth's girlfriend. I'm saying she's going to be Hulk's, Hulk's girlfriend, Bruce Banner's girlfriend. Okay. This might just get. I'm guessing that they're going to be on some different alien planet, and she's going to play this character, Jarella. That's just a hunch. And Thor is going to be with Sif. Or they're going to introduce some something that happened with Jane Foster where he's going to be bumming out or something. But he's not going to just be like hooking up with Tessa Thompson. God. They might get dumb people and they just end up calling that number. And they're like, this sounds like Russell Crowe. Just so, call Mark Ellis dumb. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> We know that I'm, Mark Ellis is a, he's, a, he's a lot smarter he than he looks, ladies and gentlemen. He's on the but TV. I buy this trailer. That's all I can say. Yeah, don't, like, don't, do, don't, don't okay. say anything. Okay, yeah. okay you got to see it. You got to see it. It's really, awesome. really, really good. Are they doing another padding? They are doing another padding. I was in the same boat with you. It's like I, I hated that trailer. It was like, it, not as disturbed as you were. I like the way how. <laughs> yeah. how oh, yeah. Oh, I like actually me out. how creeped out. I enjoy your creeped out in this, though. That is that nightmare about padding. The bear with the toothbrush. And yeah, it's like, oh, just brushing its teeth. It's made me ill. I like that though. It never made me. I just didn't like the trailer. Like, it just felt forced, like him going down the stairs. I was like, oh, it's another one of those big, loud, stupid family films yeah. that I'll hate. And I was so wrong. It was a very lovable, really well done <laughs> snort. It's an elephant with a giant metal like, blade. Like when Harloff it's, call uh, yeah. a lightsaber uh, that that light sword thing. Yeah, that, that, that light, light sword thingy. Yeah, it's an elephant with a lightsaber yeah. trunk. Yeah. Snored. It's not a, art. It's a full on blown out like fight yeah. argument. Yeah. Uh, hey, let me save your future marriage. Yeah. I'm gonna. Agree Wedding's with, off, Darren. I'm agreeing with both you and your fiance because you're both right. I think after seeing the Jungle Book, I'd love to see an all animated CGI with little cute wolves talking like, "Mommy, what's happening?" Is like super freaky, so like unbelievably cute. You're angry at your pets when you come home. Like, how come you can't talk like these animals in the movie? <laughs> you're but angry at your with, pets. <laughs> within the same sentence, though, I have to agree with your wife. You can't you can't have a human that's CG. We haven't broken that uncanny valley, is what it's called yet. When you see a CGI person 
in, in a movie, you could tell they're fake. Even though they're very realistic, we still haven't been able to master the human CGI actor yet. So that's not there. So I agree with both of you. If you have a human interacting, shoot them for real, like they did in Jungle Book. But if you have all animals, like Dennis pointed out, Pixar has been doing all fake stuff and no one's had any problems with it. We're at that point now where we can actually make animals look real it's freaky so then they could talk and you're like i'm watching these animals have a fun conversation and i'm not looking at their mouths move in a weird way i'm not thrown out of the movie i'm just watching it now and accepting it so you're both right well yeah <laughs> you know i'll be like wait I'm, I'm just floating above them i've seen the movie wait, now would they not let you in because you're press or because you're the guy that might spill a gallon of iced tea and not <laughs> i think it's i think <laughs> run out <laughs> i think it's both it could be both now but make that a little harsher reality for you imagine the shark just grips onto your leg you're yeah. still alive and it's just constantly drowning mm. you for about six or seven hours but in your insane here i've got my insane one jumping out of a plane with explosive explosives attached to me so that i kill myself right before i explode on the ground i would just have it timed so i jump out of a plane as high as possible and i have explosives and i just trigger it right so i just explode right before See, I which snap you want to chime it's in it's weird like i, I feel kind of like oh, i remember like at wondercon i missed preacher and someone was just like "Ooh, it was so good Ooh, and that no. was me too, though. Just to, I know. Just to defend Ellis, that I know. was me and, and but, now, me but now the tables have been turned, haven't they? I was very close. In here? <laughs> he might be. <laughs> Dennis, what's up? <laughs> also here, John Schnapp. I was over here just saying I don't want any beans and my macaroni and cheese. And they said Lowry's is the place where you go to make sure that doesn't happen with the pumpernickel. What's up? I love anytime we bring up golf, football, and basketball right off the top of the show. Schnapp <laughs> has to turn it to beans. I know, but uh, you know what was fun on... Uh, I read something on Reddit, like some like you know spoilery like guest guest script, where it was basically uh, uh, Luke says to Ray, "No, you are my father." Like she's <laughs> like a an immaculate rebirth of Anakin or some weirdo, <laughs> some fan sweat lodge. From, like I'm writing my own version. It was like it was so much fun. Check it out. It's probably like some remnant of it is left up on Reddit. Check it out. It's Gonna totally be made insane. Into a film soon. Uh, some fan film. Somebody <laughs> somebody should make it. It was really fun. It was more fun than speculating on this because honestly, it's like. If, if she's not Luke's kid, then who is she? And how does she have all these amazing force powers? Unless she is Anakin Skywalker reborn. Who knows? I've never even seen those horrible Smurf movies. Anyway, I'm going to buy this simply because after seeing Jungle Book, I think a live action version with these Pokemon creatures, but made even more realistic. Like who wouldn't freak out with a Pikachu that's like, like a cat? Badass. That's actually realistic and like can hop around and snuggle with you. It's like, but also talks and has electrical powers. Well, now you say he's like a kitty. Yeah, I mean that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna give them all real animal, you know, you know, anthrop anthropomorphize them so that they're like other animals. And so, there's so many characters. Oh, I mean, you gotta you can catch them all. Snap, buy or sell the new image from Pete's dragon. I sell it. It looks like a weird hairy dog. <laughs> <laughs> Don't they know dinosaurs had feathers? Come on, people. It's evolution. <laughs> Revolution. I don't know. I think the cooler movie is actually Schnepp as like an adult version of that kid in The Wizard. Remember that movie in 1989? Yeah. And Schnepp is like the guy. He's like the bully at the arcade. Goes up, puts his quarter next, and he just kicks the crap out of every other kid. Why on do the I board. have to I be the that. bully? I don't want to be the bully. Because you're like 40 years old. You're in an arcade. <laughs> All and right. a bunch of kids. I guess that's real. I guess I'll be the bully. Hey, get out of here. I put a bunch of quarters in and push oh, the kid no. over. It's my turn to play Sinistar. I'm alive. I'm sorry. I'll do it. You sign me up. Sorry, man. I just got to typecast you. <laughs> You guys are both wrong and screwed up. It's Captain America I'm on Team Cap. Ugh, I don't know. I don't. Anything I say, like I'm scared. I'm, I'm scared of what just I just say. What he's it. more corrupt. That's what you want to say. <laughs> just a little, just a little dirtier. I'm just gonna leave it that, D. Ryan, man. All right. You're giving things away, though. I'm not giving Four anything to away. one, and all of us will now be doing the show from Canada. Moving <laughs> forward, Ashley, With Justin Bieber. <laughs> it's definitely, it's gonna get nominated. I think it has a very like right now. Not having seen any of these other giant films that are coming out in the summer or during Christmas of this year, I think Jungle Book has got a lock on the Oscar. Not only is it gonna nom be nominated, but it's gonna win. So it's basically all these other movies have to come out and beat it. Because basically what you're watching when you see Jungle Book is 99% fabrication. They shot everything on a green screen. Almost nothing in the film that you're seeing visually is real, yet all of it looks real. All of the animals look real. The only thing that they actually shot was Mowgli on a green screen, like hopping around on like green rocks and things like that. So when you see the behind the scenes, it's really astonishing 
that you're being tricked by these special effects. So to me, and it's the best special effects of any kind of animals talking that I've ever seen. It's, I literally didn't ever think about it after being astonished for the first five minutes watching wolves talk. Then everything else was like, yeah, of course everything else talks. Everything talks, the, cre the snails, the little, everything has its own personality. It's incredible. So yeah, I think not only is it gonna be Oscar nominee, but I'm predicting it's gonna win the Oscar. Hey, what's up everybody? All right. <laughs> I, was, <clears throat> I had a lot of drinks last night. Uh, the complex guys are in town, so it's always dangerous. <clears throat> How's it going? Yeah, I loved it too. Uh, especially uh, me and Dennis did a reaction for it this morning, and Fuqua and, and Hawk and Denzel all together again since training day. That's cool. Add D'Onofrio to the mix. Add all these other guys. It just looks like a fun film. Pratt definitely the comedic. You know, he's going to be the jokester, but it's, it feels like it's a natural fit. Like he's got to be a little crazy. So. I'm all in, man. I think that the, this teaser trailer is fun. And and that's, the, yeah, I like the to, villain whose name escapes me, but you get you know Scar's when you God. see him. No, yeah. we were yeah. talking about him. He's yeah. like instantly slimy. Yeah. He's, he's like instantly evil. Slimy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even though he's not like a physically intimidating presence, it's just like you just feel like he's pulling the strings yeah. behind the it's, scenes. It's his body of work that yeah. has gotten to your subconscious because the thing that always gets to me is he was so despicable in, in Boys Don't Cry. Mm, um, yes, and it always it's it's always there. It's how good of an actor he is too. But that that role is. Oh wait, there. here's my impersonation of him in Green Lantern. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so bad. There it is. Yeah, not his not his fault yeah. though. Not his I know. fault. Uh, I really like the trailer. I thought. I mean, I haven't. I'm not. I don't, I'm not even planning on seeing the Huntsman, so I'll be skipping that. But I love Emily Blunt, and I think she's a great actress. And this trailer. Though it might give a little bit too much away, I think the way they cut it, it's like you don't really know how it's going to go. But obviously, she dyes her hair at some point, so she's suspect in some weird way. It definitely had that Gone Girl flavor to it, right? Uh, but intrigued me enough to I really want to see it. What is this is? number you keep? Why do you keep saying four twenty? <sighs> <laughs> what are you talking about, Emily Blunt? Blunt, yeah, blunt flimp, flomp. Schnapp, what do you think of Willem Dafoe in Justice League? Wait a minute, how can Henry Cav Cavill be in it? He oh. Uh, <laughs> Willem Dafoe I love Willem Dafoe I, I think he's fantastic I don't believe for a second though That they cast him as a good guy The only thing I think he the, If he's a good guy He's playing Harvey Dent Before he becomes Two-Face He is born to play A villain in these kind of superhero films So I seriously hope It's just some subterfuge Like yeah he's a good guy Called Dark Side Whatever It's like That's what I'm hoping He's a good He's an amazing actor So he could play a good guy Or a bad guy I'm happy they cast him I don't care who he's playing really But I secretly hope That he's playing a super villain I got a question yep. What if he's playing What if they cast him To play John Johns The Martian Manhunter You think that that's a possibility I mean they haven't announced How you know, old is that character Well he's kind of he's He can play any age really Because okay. he's a shapeshifter But he is I've always seen him like he's an older, like in his 50s Martian or whatever, you know, however Martians age, he's slightly older. Well, when you're hunting men and they're on a different planet, it ages you. <laughs> I know. It's a he's stressful got, job. He does have a slightly weird name. Martian yeah. Manhunter? Yeah. What's up, dude? It's like, he's why like, do I have to be the Martian man? Why I can't I just be a Manhunter? What, yeah. Why do you have to like, like, like profile me from yeah. what planet I'm from? Well, can't I just be a hunter? <laughs> yeah. I'm just yeah. a dude yeah. from Mars. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like uh, specifically like, uh, you know, it's problematic, not in a cute way, because he's basically saying, you know, hey, a lot of the things that happen in that film, you know, I'm guilty of just as much as anybody else in like, you know, I, I got a chance to visit uh, the Avengers set. Uh, Age of Ultron in London and watched him and he was kind of he was halfway through the the shoot which was a, a harsh harsh schedule nonstop shoot he was limping he had hurt himself he was right, tired yeah. and it was like yo you've got another like 60 days to go it was like it was a pretty brutal shoot and I watched it for like three days and I was like wow the guy you got to give him a lot of credit I mean he, I, Avengers number one is still my favorite team superhero film yet it's still my favorite and uh Age of Ultron, yeah, it's not as good as Avengers, and it's a lot of other films. Like I, I I'll say I liked Civil War better than Age of Ultron. I think it's a better film. That's not saying anything negative about Joss Whedon or his creativity or his imagination or his abilities as a writer or director. It's just I think there was a, you know, there was some of this back and forth between him and some of the people at Marvel where it became kind of like a tug of war. I think. And that happened while they were shooting all the way through to the final edit. And I think that's a little apparent in the film, but Age of Ultron has amazing sequences in it. And it's also, it really is a great continuation of, you know, seeing all these characters like the Avengers move forward. So I wouldn't, you know, I wish he wasn't as hard on himself with Age of Ultron. It's not a failure, you know? I want my MTV. You that's why I, I, I totally buy this. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, there is no more reason to have an MTV now. We have you you are in control of any music video you want to watch on YouTube or any other of these streaming services. You control it. You pick, oh, I want to watch this. And there's like a group of other, like you go down the the wormhole, the YouTube wormhole, and you're like, I've just watched 50. Now I'm into, I'm into like the gr grunge metal. You know, it's like I started out with like the talking heads. So who knows? I mean, I think uh, I want my MTV is a really good idea. We're going to get to see all those VJs, video jockeys. Remember that terminology? Yep. All this kind of weird terminology. And yes, back when they showed 24 hours a day music videos, MTV is not what it was and never can be what it was. So it's cool to document that kind of historic moment when it really became an iconic presence where you actually had to watch MTV because you wanted to stay in tune with all these cool videos that were you know, popping off. Kids, before MTV was MTV, it was MTV. <laughs> I buy Vin Diesel as Silver Surfer after looking at that poster. <laughs> with Chrome Dome floating around. Um, yeah, no, I buy the poster. It's mysterious. It's It, it's, it say, says a lot by showing nothing. Is kind of, it just shows, it's like new roads ahead. It's kind of a somber, looking Vin Diesel. We're probably reflecting on some of the things that happened in the previous movie. So yeah, I buy the poster. I, I think it's a, it's a cool entry point to this new Fast and Furious film. And it's, it's the emptiness of the space. It's him exactly on, right. It's the side view, his face. It's, yes. not a, it's not, I'm not a tough dude. It's not a happy, it's like this reflective look. And that's so, why I think that I buy it. Because, right the, because the words and the fact that where what we've known has happened in the process of this film. Why are you laughing, Mark? <laughs> I sell this. It's, it's ridiculous. It's you stupid. you got this giant it's, grin on your face. It's just a dude looking sideways at <laughs> a road. Like, are you lost? Use your phone. Get some directions. What is he Mark, doing Mark, in the middle of the road by Mark, himself? Christian <laughs> and I are just kind of like taking it in and so creating angry. a story guys, from looking at the poster. You guys wove this amazing <laughs> tapestry that's so much better than anything in this poster. It just he's looking sideways like he is me looking at this poster like like really that's it he just looks confused he looks lost he looks like a traveler who who misread a map and now he's looking he also looks like if somebody's presenting him with these new roads that are ahead he's like really do I gotta go he's so really excited about are the you new selling adventure this? no I, I'm I'm tired of of every movie Vin Diesel so reluctant to get back into it and it's like oh, okay fine you'll pull me back in again guess what guys you can get Dom Toretta to do whatever stupid heist you want him to do he's up for because he's got nothing better to do this poster does nothing for me i don't i, I still want to see the movie but it's, it's just a dumb poster it, it means nothing i, I, I mean totally, I, don't even... I don't know where else is coming from you man. got you guys made an amazing movie just now okay i like your guys movie but the poster it's right. ridiculous i don't even know who you are anymore <laughs> yes it makes it even worse. guys ashley was so excited about being a vj two segments ago and now, and now you brought, brought the mood down, down with animal abuse. Hey, i didn't knock the horse what, what's god. next is he eating horse meat no oh my god he's just like selling horse meat um That's you know what I'm going to steal a quote from the Collider News that where the, the guy who wrote it was like, we're not going to let Robert De Niro go out in a boxing movie with grudge match. So that's why he's back. Ah, I, just, I thought that was pretty yeah. funny. But uh, yeah, the trailer, I, I, it, it looks like a really well put together trailer. And the story of Roberto Duran is, uh, um, it's Roberto, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Just to make sure I don't say his name wrong. But, he uh, will punch you out. Yeah, I don't want to get punched in the face <laughs> by Roberto Duran at any age. And um, yeah, you know what? It's funny. I saw the trailer and then Christian came in a little bit later and he was like, is that Usher? Because that's exactly what I said out loud when I watched it. Is that Usher? Is it, oh, that is Usher. Cool. Yeah. He's playing just, Sugar Ray Leonard. I'm so. so glad I didn't go yeah. along with Christian when he asked me if I heard of that story. Because like I wanted to lie, just be like, oh, yeah, that was a great fight. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, so, no, he knocked the horse. T, T, T Rose said, well, the horse did hit first. Oh, <laughs> real nice. Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, poor horse. Um, that trailer. Unbelievable. What do you have to say about Finstock and the fact that he calls you Juan Schnemp? Well, you know, like uh, he's got a lot of fanatics out there, and I'm like, I gotta just tell you, Chimp Stock, he's going, and he's, he's got a he's got a lucky streak. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue that. I mean, me and Dennis went against him and JLX or whatever that other dude's name is. We went against them, JLX. and somehow, I mean, it was me and Dennis. You know, we're pretty smart dudes. We got beat up. We got destroyed, and you know, it's it's that luck that you know, if anything. You know, I'm going to give Finstock that edge on on just like a goofy, almost moronic <laughs> ape like way of kind of pulling out an answer or being able to just get that edge just by pure luck. So that might happen. But, you know, I'm sorry, Flimpy, um, <laughs> Flimpy. coming at you. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. I mean, look, it's never it's never considered professional for the announcers to comment on who they think is going to win. But Christian, this is this this seems to be a horse punch. This seems to be <laughs> where right. going to just look, walk. Let up. me just yeah. say, we might be three thousand miles from Graceland, <laughs> but I'm not going to be punching any camels. Also, here is writer director extraordinaire John Schnepp. Why, thank you for that intro, Sinead. It's so cool to have you back. 
<laughs> jazzed uh-huh. up for Tuesday yeah, night? Most of my life, unfortunately. But um, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I'm pretty jacked up about it. I was hoping that, that that skimping around New York would be like kind of like part of this West Side Story, Doctor Strange musical number. Right. But we know that that's not... <laughs> Kids, relax. That's not really the part of movie magic. And then while jumping and run, that's not really going to be in the film. That's, they're probably jumping into some weird portal. Watch, it'll be in the movie and it's a musical. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to it. And I, I cannot wait to see. What do I expect to see in the trailer? I expect to see Doctor Strange in his astral form. I expect to see Tilda Swinton as the ancient one. I expect to see a couple of really cool amazing psychedelic shots from another dimension. That's what I want to see. Uh, I don't know. Is this... This Why are you asking me as if you assume I know because everything about One Direction? Because I'm pretty sure Harloff and Schnapp don't listen to One Direction as much as you do. Um, he, yeah, he is the one with the long hair, and he was dating Kendall Jenner. He's oh, a front okay. runner. All right. The well, guy. All right. Let's see if you can act, kid. Good luck. I believe in him, you guys. <laughs> what the hell is I going on? I don't know. What we heard about this. You whispered. You think you got some ideas. What are they going to yeah, release? Definitely the Batman October 2018. That's a, pr- the perfect Halloween movie. That's awesome. Right. Yeah, so I think that, you know, glad they listened to us. So thanks, Screen Rant, for, like, you know, breaking that news. That'll be really cool news. And What's I, the other one? I think the other one's going to be Superman. Superman, not yeah. Lobot. No, I, probably not Lobo. I think Lobo. Lobo, 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 Lobo I'm, going, be, I'm going totally yeah. Empire Strikes <laughs> Back. Lobo. I, actually, Sorry. I'm glad you said Lobot. He deserves his own no solo movie. movie. No. A Star Wars story. Yep. Lobot. First Lobo. Yeah, but first Lobot, yeah. then Lobo. Okay. And then Lobo versus Lobot. I think it's going to be, you know? Yeah, I think Mr. It, English, what do you think? Well, I think it's it really comes down to, I'm not even doing that. <laughs> Mr. Oh, English. Oh, I love give Mr. Me English. me a couple of crumpets then. And so I think it comes down to, it does come down to the theater. And My question is, who's more of a nerd? Christian Harloff with Star Wars or John Schnepp with comics? I'll let you Man. answer that because we got the reason. I I know where this mm. got stemmed from. This is this was from our, we just put up the Force Awakens commentary, which is live right now. If you've got the Force Awakens, uh-huh. you should check it out. And I am a big fan of the canon going on in Star Wars, so I was referencing the book like quite a six thousand different oh, books constantly yeah, again, yeah, constantly. But, but, but he goes, but this is for the book, and there's things that are ca- ca- canon. And he was just he goes, he looks at me, he's like, "You're a real Star Wars sweaty." Uh, and so well, no. Here's the, here it is. I'll I'll say yeah, definitely. As far as for Star Wars, Christian is like the biggest Star Wars nerd that I know. As far as reading every single book, every comic book tie-in, every video game cinematic cutscene, every you know Star Wars Rebels, every so he's like immersed himself in that Star Wars universe. Uh, but like for myself, I just watched you know The Force Awakens, so he kept mentioning like, well, the backstory of Maz Kanata's friends, Kimbi Scambi, that was in a Blood for Blood Farts Five, Star Wars, a new sto- a new hope. But it's canon. But he's like, but it's canon. I'm like, look, dude, I don't give an f. I'm like, I'm trying to enjoy the fucking film. Whoa. Stop talking about stop talking about all these weird books, man. And it's like. I get it that it is canon that it fills in some of the backstory, but people like me are not going to read those books. I just want to enjoy the film. So it's like if the film, it's like if there's a scene in the film that I'm like, ah, I wish they explained that. He's like, well, it's fully explained in uh, Star Wars page Saboteur Seven, yeah. uh, page fifty three, with but Darth Vader's son. Is, so. But the be- but to to further along this question, this guy is probably the sweatiest comic book guy you will ever hear. I walk in sometimes and I love and I come in and I like to watch heroes because it's it gets me informed. But there's in and, and there's sometimes when they'll go off on well in issue three twenty five in nineteen eighty seven and you're just like, wow, they really know their stuff. So I don't really think that there is a one or the other. See, both- I can settle this. <laughs> I, I can tell because I have to deal with both of you ad nauseum. So here's <laughs> here's the way that it shakes up. Okay, is that is that lifetime stats? Schnepp wins biggest nerd because Schnepp has been collecting comic books since he was a fetus, and he's been he's been digesting yeah. those and absorbing the material ever since then. So he's got the longer track record. But recently, what Christian Harloff has done with Star Wars canon is unprecedented. He, if he could chop it up and snort it in the bathroom, he would totally do that to the. Who's- to say I haven't. So it could have happened. So I'm going to say while Schnepp is like Larry Bird, the greatest career all-time shooter, I'm going to say Christian is like Steph Curry, where it's like, dude, this guy's stats are impressive, and he's coming up on your heels, Schnepp. You better keep reading comic books because this guy's well, coming. I think they're also in two different worlds, so it's not yeah. even a competition. It's really like we're just both big fans of these different things. I mean, comic books is a larger world, so... I'm not saying I'm a, I'm a I'm the king of all comics. Or I have, there's a lot of information in comic books that I haven't read. I'd have to say, like in the in the niche world of Star Wars, 
this guy's got almost all the bases covered. He would definitely say Bestman. You know what I'm saying? He would. Oh, he would you know, I'm just. Oh, yeah, 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 that's good. Had to fit that's that good. one. That's good. What's happening? So, uh, well, yeah, speaking there's of there's no competition. Out. If you're a fan, you no. should just enjoy this stuff. And if you like Star Wars, watch his show. If you like comic books, watch my show. It's a win-win. All right, Sinead, who's the biggest nerd? Me or uh, Schnepp? I mean, I think you guys are equally as nerdy to nice. one another. Yeah. 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 Okay. And I'm the cool one. All right, what's next? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He is the sweatiest comic book nerd I know. He is the Schnepp man, Mr. English, John Schnepp. Hey, what's up? You guys can follow me just at John Schnepp on Twitter and Instagram. And check out my Kickstarter, Sweaties Unite, Rise of the Uber Nerd. It's live. It's the last two weeks. Pitch in. Help me make this film. And Mark Ellis. Mark, where can they find you? Uh, you can find Thanks for that glowing introduction. Uh, you can find me. <laughs> Wait, let me hometown. do it. Mark Ellis, Thank the you. coolest dude on the planet. Mr. Rock and Roll. <laughs> Mr. Don't You Know It. It's Mark the Mother Effin Ellis. That's right. And speaking of rock and roll, Schnapp, I'll be at the hometown of Kiss, Ted Nugent, Axel Foley, and Robocop this weekend. I'm in Detroit at the Comedy Castle. You can get tickets at markellislive.com. And we're so happy to finally have her back here on the Movie Talk set. Sinead DeFries, where can they find you? I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Sinead DeFries and at thatsoshinead.com. And it's so great to be back. Good. Yay. And for me, you'll see me grabbing Javo Darth's helmet and smashing it into a toilet 175 times in Vegas. So make sure you check me out at Christian Harloff, Twitter and Instagram, as well as Jedi Council, Movie Talk, the whole shebang, and Schmodown this week. Sam Levine versus Hal Rudnick iconic those two guys are going to actually be on the show on thursday to talk about their match who will win hashtag schmodown let us know who you think is going to win the match thanks for joining us guys and we'll see you tomorrow